Kalimera to all the urbanists out there. Right now we're in the beautiful Greek Peloponnese and we're going to find out why is the Peloponnese one of the best places to visit in Greece. It's a bit underrated. Of course a lot of people know the ancient Greek history with the Spartans and we'll chat a little bit about that but there's so much more that the Peloponnese has to offer. I'm Ariel, this is Urbanist and right now we are in the medieval city of Mistras which is abandoned. It, all the people that used to live here from Byzantine times and onwards, when there was the Greek Revolution and everything started shifting in Greece, they started moving down to the modern city of Sparta. So we're going to explore this abandoned medieval city. And I am joined by Evan Hi. of Explorabilia. And you are a Peloponnesian. I am. <laughs> I am. Yes, a Peloponnesian. Yes, and from my father's side. And where are we right now? What was the views that we're looking at? We're, we're on top of uh, Mistras, which is of course a uh, you know, kind of medieval capital. Um, uh, after the fall of Constantinople, you know, the last vestiges, let's say, of the Byzantine Empire were here. Mm. And uh, they had a king, like a despot, so to speak. That's how, who was more of a feudal monarch rather than an emperor anymore, although they held titles and they had the regalia and everything, it was uh, really just a kind of small, kind of tiny state subject to the Ottoman Sultan. Right. And so it was, let's say, the last kind of flash, let's say, of the, uh, uh, you know, the last spark uh, of the Byzantine Empire was, was here in medieval times. And then the views. So we're looking at towards the, the modern city of Sparta is down there. That is right, yes. Yeah. You know, it's uh, the, the Spartan plain. You can see most of the uh, green trees we see down there is uh, olive trees mm. and the famous Kalamata varieties and of course in the distance the modern city of Sparta that was established by uh, uh, King Otto of, of Greece in the aftermath of the Greek Revolution uh, as a rival, a rival city. It was built, uh, he brought in his own engineers from Bavaria where he mm. hailed from. Um, and they re-established, they rebuilt and kind of renovated uh, the city of, Star uh, of Sparta um, in a classical revival style. Uh, so he brought in his own engineers, he built many kind of beautiful buildings in a neoclassical style, uh, a, a sewage system, uh, water aqueducts, and, and a beautiful kind of neoclassical townhouses, some of which survive until today. And now it's filled with modern uh, apartment buildings called polikatakias. Yes, uh, <laughs> to, to the chagrin of a lot of uh, Spartans who live here today. Uh, so a lot of that ancient legacy is not so easily spotted, but we'll, we'll talk about how we can see more of the ancient Peloponnese as we walk around through this medieval city. So let's get on walking and we are facing, this is interesting, before we get on talking uh, about the Peloponnese, let's uh, step inside here. <laughs> Oh yeah, mas, oh yeah, TikTok και τέτοια δεν είναι επαγγελματικό. Δεν έχουμε δηλαδή φακούς και τρίποδα και τέτοια. Είμαστε εδώ με τον Δημήτρη τον Βλαχάκο. Έχει το γκρουπ μου που φέρνω εδώ. Α, είστε με τον Δημήτρη εδώ αυτή τη στιγμή. Ναι, ναι, είμαστε μαζί, ναι. Απλά... Ναι, ναι, έχει. Να μην είναι κάτι επαγγελματικό, δημοσιευτεί κάτι χωρί άδειε και μετά να απαγορεύεται να το γνωρίζετε. Το ξέρω, ναι, ότι χρειάζονται ναι, άδειε ναι, και ναι, τέτοια ναι, για ναι. τηλεόραση, α πούμε, ή ντοκιματικά. So right now we are in this beautiful old church dedicated to Saint Sophia. And wow, stunning architecture. Hello, Joe says, hopefully no buffering. Yeah, hopefully no buffering. So gorgeous. Beautiful. And we still see some of the mosaic floor right over here. So we are in the medieval city of Mistras, built by the Eastern Roman Empire, the Byzantines. And they built this all the way on the top of this uh, hill or on the side of the mountain in order to provide defense 
There was constant raids from other armies and pirates and criminals that they needed to build up high during that time in the medieval era in order to preserve life and society as they knew it. <clears throat> yeah, beautiful church, uh, Hagia Sophia. So welcome everyone. I bet there's a Starbucks on the other side, says Ron. No, you'll be surprised. So you'll be surprised in the Peloponnese, there's not that many of like fast food chains. It's uh, aside from the Greek ones, there might be. Yeah, uh, it, it, would be hard, it would be hard to find, uh, you know, a, a, a major fast food chain. And, you know, my two boys, uh, they love a McDonald's and a KFC. Yeah. And every time we come here and visit, it's always kind of, Daddy, Daddy, can we go to a McDonald's? You know, just kind of grab those kind of chicken bites, etc. And, uh, you know, I say, well, you can look on the map if you like and, you know, look where the nearest one is. Um, and uh, there is none to be found. There is, however, a variety of... Uh, uh, kind of local, local fast food stores yeah. like privately or family owned, and uh, where you can have uh, delicious uh, local fast food recipes. It's not McDonald's, but it's kind of probably going to be souvlaki or uh, in, in the famous gyros, which exactly. is a delicious combination of uh, pork or chicken kind of savings with uh, uh, tzatziki, mm. uh, the the garlic and yogurt uh, sauce we tend to, uh, to put in there and a fresh tomato and oh, yep. uh, uh, it's, it's kind of sprinkling of chips and paprika and all yeah. wrapped in a delicious pita. And this is, I think, our national, national food. Oh, food. Yeah. Uh, Justine and uh, Susie says uh, it's better that way. And Justine says, I love supporting local family businesses. Yeah. So another reason I'm here with Evan is because in 2024, very soon, in a few months, you'll be starting to see the first official urbanist tours hosted by Experobilia. That is Evan's tour company, and Evan himself will be taking you all around Greece on a personalized tour that is to give you the urbanist experience in real life. Yes. So if you enjoy the ancient sites, the mysteries, the histories, the abandoned industrial sites, the coffee and the food, you'll be able to experience that with Evan. Yes. Who, who I trust to give you that real life urbanist experience. And uh, you're gonna get, you're catching a glimpse of what we would be doing here today. Evan, for example, has a, one of the best guides in this region to give you a tour of Mistras. We'll, you'll meet him soon in a short video, but that's, it, this is cool because you also get a lot of local guides for these tours, right? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. The way we aim to do it is, uh, of course, we uh, it's all about meeting locals and get a feel about how people live here and their history. And uh, I found out that uh, when you have someone local, perhaps, to give you this narrative, give you this story, they have a personal investment in all this. So they speak from the heart rather than giving you a history book or a kind of list of facts. Right. Um, and uh, Dimitris here is, a, is one of those uh, fellows you will see, Hamas invested. He's kind of Spartan through and through. He's an archaeologist of note. He has excavated the site of ancient Sparta, and, and he knows the history of the region intimately for that reason. So Exactly. Yeah, that's yeah. amazing. Excellent. Excellent fellow. So let's go this way. Yeah, they, they have the, the pathway already set. Mm -hmm. And hello, Colleen. Hello, Inspire Life says it's exciting. No, indeed it is. Yeah. I'm happy to have found a guy to take the mantle and show you to your real life. Because as I explore with Evan, I realized how difficult it is to provide a tour, a real life experience. It isn't easy. <laughs> it's very different from what I'm used to when it comes to video. And uh, I really do commend Evan for having the skills and the foresight of choosing the right places and the right routes to optimize the best experience in a short amount of time. Because 
We'll see how long our tour is, but it's around a week, most of these uh, multi-day multi trips throughout a country like Greece. Yeah, we have to decide how long the tour is and where we want to be and what we want to see, but uh, generally the idea is that the tour should be very informative. We should see as much as we, we can and as much as we want to, but equally there, there has to be time to relax, recover, have a good time, enjoy a walk in the town, perhaps explore a little bit on our own, um, and of course have good, good food and a good meal and kind of, uh, you know, just get the chance to do some shopping if, if need be. And um, generally there has to be a balance, uh, you know, with, with learning. Some traveling is, is unavoidable, but mm -hmm. we try to minimize it, you know, with several stops. And the stops are kind of interesting stops all the time. There's always something to see or do or, or hear. Um, uh, but generally, it's a nice, laid-back, informative, friendly, enjoyable experience um, that everyone, anyone can join. You know, people mm. of any age, from any, any walk of life, really, uh, with any kind of level of interest or engagement in Greece. Um, it's, uh, it's, a, it's an easy, laid-back country that welcomes everyone, uh, really. And, uh, you know, don't, don't hesitate to come and explore it and discover it through the eyes of, uh, of Ariel. That knows and Greece uh, knows and loves Greece very much and intimately and uh, you know quite often. Yeah. I find that uh, you know he knows some some very interesting facts about Greece that I tend to have forgotten. <laughs> uh, you know the other day, <clears throat> what, what what did you mention the other day? We we're talking about uh, uh, Homer, the oh, Iliad. Oh, the Iliad. Uh, yeah, you <laughs> mentioned about the saying in English about the, the beware of Greeks giving gifts. Beware of Greeks giving gifts, and I just couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> wrap my mind around where I had heard it, and, uh, uh, and Ariel says that uh, well, it's 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 from the Iliad, uh, obviously. And I said, yeah, well, is it? Obviously. And then I well, kind of remembered that yeah, it was. So you know, this uh, you know very you know good exchange of uh, knowledge and and know how. And uh, I think uh, it's it's vital to to remember that this is uh, this is a program. This is a tour that Ariel has kind of changed it into an urbanist style tour. I mean, it's not, it's not mine. It's really me kind of doing, let's say, or trying to do and go and, and learn and say what Ariel uh, would, would do if he was here in person. So it's... Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's why I'm here, where we're rigorously testing <laughs> yes. the sites we can go to and the foods that we can eat. Uh, so, so it's really exciting to to see what, what actually goes into a tour because I'm used to solo traveling on my own, but I think it is possible to give that urbanist experience in real life. Yes, yeah. it is. Let's continue walking down. Hey, Ron, nice to see you here. Hello, Nebul. Hello, Colleen, Mia Louise. Let us know where you're watching from. Hello, uh, Justine, Justine says, do you do tours in cute flats or Vespas? You know, Vespas might not be involved in Greece, but if ever we cover a different Mediterranean country, maybe. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if Evan is quite a Vespa writer. It is. Uh, I mean, I've, uh, you know, I've rode Vespas in the yeah. past, yes. It is, uh, it is a really fun way to get around. Uh, for the purpose of this tour, possibly not. It's just the kilometric distances involved right. uh, make it probably unpractical yeah. uh, to, to ride on a Vespa, but... Uh, um, there might be opportunity for cycling, hint, hint. There is, yeah. I mean, there is, uh, you know, po a potential for hiking if you're up for this kind of thing. Like what we're doing right now. What we're yeah. doing right now. There, yeah. There's going to be, uh, you know, quite a bit of uh, physical... I mean, uh, Greece is a country that naturally uh, kind of draws you in and kind of tests your... your let's say, one, you know, one's physical ability with its kind of craggy terrain. And, um, but it's also a, uh, a country that is also very accessible mm. um, equally, we have to say. That. And so for all kind of levels of physical activity, there is a, uh, there is a challenging, way, challenging way of doing things, but there's also a very easy way of doing things. Right. Mm -hmm. That's exactly, yeah, yeah you, you make a good point. And um, Justine says, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll settle for a donkey. <laughs> yeah, oh, a donkey, we can totally organize. Yeah, that's, you know, it's easier than a Vespa, actually. <laughs> if, if one of the islands is included, maybe. 
There are, uh, more, there are more donkeys than uh, Vespas in Greece. You have to know that. <laughs> it's <a> true statistic. <laughs> <laughs> and we intend this to uh, potentially be a long-term thing. So there'll, there'll be other variations of the tours available. So you can see different sides of Greece potentially and or nearby countries. Yeah. 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 Um, Mia Luis says, this looks amazing. I love it. It is, yeah, so truly breathtaking medieval city. It is quite literally a city. It was crammed people here up on this hill living with these amazing views so they know any enemies could come. What, what were the typical enemies at that time? Raiders, Ottomans, um, you know, any sort of... Uh, uh, you know, kind of person at arms that would want to get their hands on the wealth, yeah. uh, let's say, of the region. Uh, of course, you have to imagine there would be uh, harvests, manufactories, uh, the silk trades, mm. you know, and a very kind of wealthy kind of a city with a lot of kind of valuables and, of course, not least the treasures of the churches, so to speak, golden crosses and uh, you know, uh, vestments and that sort of thing, Any, anything they could get their hands on really. Um, so That's there was right. a lot of wealth here to attract, uh, let's say, potential invaders. But though equally, this is the reason that we see this is such a kind of easily defensible place. Um, you know, it's kind yeah, you can see uh, people mi um, a few miles away, many miles away. Yeah, yeah, you can you can see from a great distance, and uh, of course the very kind of narrow streets, and there are some kind of gatehouses and kind of block uh, areas where you could easily kind of hold uh, an invader with uh, using a very small but capable force. Right, and then right there we see we're seeing the palace, one of the palaces at least. Yes, yeah, it's beautiful, beautiful uh. palace of the uh, despots. It, uh, it's under restoration now. Uh, as uh, as here, it's kind of a you can imagine from its size what a luxurious yeah. um, uh, palace it must have been for that time, for that era. Mika says beautiful views. And what area? What year does this date back to? Ninth century, a little bit earlier. This uh, has ex this uh, area is is a fortified acropolis. Let's say existed long before. Oh, um, I see. Yeah, I, uh, but it uh, lasted up until. Yeah, maybe 15th, 15th century, early 16th, before it was abandoned. And eventually, you know, the population moved uh, to, uh, to the plains of Sparta. Yeah, so yeah. by 1821, they were all leaving towards the area of Sparta. Yeah. 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 But uh, the, a lot of buildings we're seeing is from between 9th century to about 15th century, give or take. But beautiful building that we're seeing here. Wow. And uh, Ron says, how accurate was the 300 movie? Ron, you will be learning about that, actually, so stay tuned. <laughs> and then an um, uh, in-person tour for anyone who might be interested in actually joining Evan throughout Greece may include uh, 300 sites, which uh, would be exciting. Yeah. So look right down there, we see the views. So we're walking in that general distance downhill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I mean, if we would venture yeah. and, uh, and answer, yes, the movie was reasonably yeah. accurate. Oh, um, okay. I would say that uh, perhaps the, the physique of the warriors might have been a bit exaggerated, as well as their uh, suits of armor, their war, especially the helmets, were, of course, kind of a bit fantastical. Yeah, um, more Roman than it was Greek. I guess yeah. it was, uh, you know, was something also. that was... Uh, uh, out of a graphic novel uh, yeah. uh, by uh, Frank Miller. Frank Miller, that's right. But uh, I guess everything else, I mean, the story as it has uh, remained to us, it is true that a very kind of small uh, but powerful force of Greeks managed to stop uh, a much larger force by taking advantage of the landscape mm -hmm. uh, of, of Thermopylae, where you have a very kind of you know, uh, impenetrable, impassable mountain on one side right. and the sea on the other. And this is just a perfect location, you know, a bottleneck where you can mount a defense 
if you're if you're good enough, if you're a good warrior, mm -hmm. of course. And and um, and they were they were the best the best warriors of uh, ancient antiquity, and they managed to uh, delay. Let's say it was a three-day battle, which was eventually lost. I mean, of course, it was a battle right. of attrition, but uh, they managed to delay the uh, the Persians enough and give them a bloody nose and uh, enough for uh, opportunity to. Enough for the, Athenians you know, for, to for the Athenians for gather the, their forces, gather their forces, gather their the fleet especially, and kind of give them like a proper beating at uh, Salamina at sea, right? Uh, kind of soon after. So, uh, so yes, it is all uh, it is all true, and it's a, I guess a proof of that is that we don't speak person in this part of the world. Oh uh, yeah. Otherwise we, we might have. <laughs> <laughs> There's barely any rice anymore. <laughs> uh, which I, you know, I love Persian and it's a, also a great country with great yeah. history. So, uh, you know, no hard feeling. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> that, those wounds have already healed, it seems. <laughs> Not all wounds, but that one, yes. Yeah, you know, it depends if you if you give the wounds or if you take them, I suppose. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Good morning, Kay. Nice to see you here. Hello, Oleg. Tuning in from the Ukraine. Nice to see you here. Uh, Susie says, I prefer the easy way down. Uh, paragliding. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's really really nice. that's a great idea. Yeah. Uh, Nicole says, "How big would the groups be?" So generally, small groups. Yes, only. And small you groups, you prefer working with small groups also, which I think is a good thing. I do. Yeah. Yes, the ideal size I think will be uh, between six to twelve guests. Mm -hmm. uh, this will give us enough time to not just deliver a content or go from place to place, but also, very importantly, get to know one another and, uh, you know, just talk about ourselves and uh, um, ask more questions, spend more time together. Um, you know, I don't, uh, I am wearing a microphone now, but I don't use a microphone to, to, deli oh, yeah, to you deliver. Do, you don't carry the big mic. <laughs> to deliver everything and no, no umbrellas for you to follow. Hey, and, where's, uh, where's your flag? I don't, I don't see a flag. No, no. <laughs> the big red flag. No, it's, uh, you know, but the, the mode is uh, like yeah. imagine a group of friends traveling together and enjoying a good time and, you know, having conversations and, uh, uh, you know, kind of exchanging views, you know, political, historical views and knowledge. And it's all very conversational. Um, oh, and no. I, I believe that because yeah, all of us have a kind of level, certain level of knowledge about something enough to start a conversation and kind of learn from one another. Right. Um, so I think it's a very kind of yeah, conversational way of doing this, uh, rather than I, I talk, you follow. <laughs> <laughs> yep, very similar to my live videos. It's conversational and also it is a, a more interactive experience. And then you mentioned it's like hanging out with a friend. That's fascinating because that's how I treat all my videos, in yeah, essence, sure. is hanging out with a friend. Yeah, huh. uh, because uh, what's, what, what's better than <laughs> traveling with a friend, you know, a new friend perhaps that you haven't uh, had the opportunity to kind of get to know very well but this is the purpose we're traveling you know together over the course of several days just to, just to know one another so nicole says we need an urbanist orange flag why not <laughs> i can uh, i can do that what kind of visibi high visibility vests how about that <laughs> there there may be some physical urbanist touches stay tuned <laughs> Yeah, yeah, there will be something, yeah, but yeah. it's still in the works. It's but, still in the uh, works, yeah, yeah, to be announced. Let's check out this little view over here. Yeah. Oh, wow, ladies and gentlemen. So this was probably someone's window or porch. Possibly. Right wow, look at that. Would you want a porch like this? Let us know. Nebud says that's the way to go. Yeah, that's the way to do a very nice uh, multiple day tour. Joe says, do you take Groupons? <laughs> they, they take what? <laughs> Groupons, the, the app. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't think, I don't even... Joe, do. Joe, we are a I luxury experience. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but, uh, you know, to be fair, um, you know, kind of anything that's mass-produced, possibly not in my purview. Uh, 
Uh, D says, welcome to, uh, welcome from New Brunswick, Canada. It's just 6 a.m. here. I love watching your videos. And oh my God, yes, what a view, says D. Oh yeah. Sure, you view a little bit more slowly. So down there we're seeing the monastery, which we may catch a glimpse of. Nebul says, yeah, definitely a porch like this, oh yes. So no wonder the Spartans were some of the best warriors in the world if they grew up with amazing views and plains like this. A very plentiful place. Also known for having more rainfall than usual in the rest, compared to the rest of Greece. So they were able to grow a lot of crops here in the area of Laconia. Down there is the lower parking. Um, if you're coming here on your own, I would recommend going to the upper parking and walking downwards. Unless if you want a more strenuous hike. Kat says, is this the Seattle of Greece? No, it doesn't rain that much. <laughs> it rains a bit more, but not that much. <laughs> no, I mean, that's why it's more green than other parts. And then when hanging on the Peloponnese, there's a lot of uh, clouds usually overhead. Yeah, yeah, no, it's definitely not like Seattle. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, you can see now it's uh, late October, yeah. uh, almost November, and... Uh, the temperature is above me, what is this, 70, 80? Or, yeah, almost 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's quite uh, dry. There was, a, there was a drizzle yesterday, the other day in Athens, like a very quick kind of refreshing rain that didn't hold for more than a few minutes. So right. that's, that's about the gist of it. And uh, we're going around in our t-shirts and shorts. Mm -hmm. uh, one of us went for a swim this morning, just uh, on, the, on the beach across the hotel. And, you know, right. the, they tipped their toe, they found out that it was kind of very warm and enticing and they just went, went in for a dip. So it's, uh, it's as good as, uh, as summertime, <clears throat> if not even more pleasant because it's not so excruciatingly hot. Yeah, exactly. Uh, like in July and August. So uh, autumn is definitely a great time uh, of the year to visit. Um, it is, yeah, because it's a, it's a, you don't get as stung by the heat as you do in the summer. Yeah. And then uh, the waters are still warm, as you just mentioned, all the way until about November, late November, right? They, they are pretty warm. On a good, uh, yeah. on, on a good season, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is sometimes. Yeah. That's what a lot of other Greeks told me throughout the islands as well. Yeah. We so, so if you're coming here around this time, maybe bring just one layer. You don't need too many layers. Uh, just in case. Uh, so, Evan, when it comes to the Peloponnese, a lot of people go to Athens, a lot of people go to the islands, but why is it worth going down through Corinth, the Isthmus of Corinth, and getting over here to the Peloponnese? I guess because it's uh, a little bit forgotten by the masses, and, uh, you know, naturally when you... Uh, and just let me uh, pause you there. <laughs> yeah. The masses that we're seeing is more Greeks because it's a national holiday. Yes. Yeah, so we're actually not seeing too many foreign tourists here today. Yeah, today yeah. It's, a, it's a special day for Greece and we're going to get back to the, to the Peloponnese. Uh, it's a special day because it's the 28th of October is one of our national holidays. Ohi um, day. Ohi day, that's right. And, Which means uh, no. <laughs> no day. The day no, we said, no to the Italians. No to the invaders. Yes. No to the invaders. Uh, you know, okay. It happened to be the Italians, but okay. again, you know, I, you know, I, I love the Italians and no, no hard feelings. That's yeah. why we're not doing Vespas in our tour. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. That's, that's exactly why not. Uh, you know, you shouldn't have asked me this question today. <laughs> but uh, no, the, the truth is that exactly as you put it, today is the day that these uh, type of archaeological historic sites are free. Yeah. Uh, not just for Greek uh, citizens, but also for everyone who visits. Oh, cool. Um, so there is a, a lot more visitors for this time of the year mm -hmm. as, as usual. 
uh, but still, it's not as busy as it can potentially be in July and August. Um, so, in, in, in that context, um, a lot of foreign tourists don't actually end up coming here, um, aside maybe from the occasional day tour. Yeah. But it is worth coming here for a few days, minimum. It is, absolutely yeah. it is. And, uh, you know, some will tell you that uh, it is, uh, you know, visiting the islands is, uh, is an absolute must and we want to see Santorini, etc. Right. And that is, uh, you know, that is also possible. I mean, you know, this is a seven day tour. Um, you can take 10 and perhaps it's not within the scope of what we'll do together um, to head to the islands because, again, you know, logistically, uh, it doesn't work very well for us with timings and flights and uh, perhaps a bit of kind of uh, ferry uh, travel involved in between. Yeah, that, um, that's for a very different tour. Usually cruises are a better bet if you're looking for that type of stuff but it is, for the uh, islands. Yeah. But it's totally yeah. possible to kind of add a few days right. uh, to your trip if you absolutely have to visit Santorini. And, and why, why not? You shouldn't. Maybe you know, kind of three days after or three days before, you can mm. set a bit of extra time aside and to go to another place that perhaps it's not part of this particular tour. Um, <clears throat> this, uh, you know, there is history in Santorini as well. Uh, some oh, yeah. of it, of course. <laughs> probably one of the coolest uh, histories of all the islands. But uh, yeah. it doesn't compare, and that's, I think, the main difference. You know, yeah. When we talk about Mykonos and Santorini, they are beautiful, they are very kind of unique architecturally. There is a lot of kind of partying there and fine restaurants and sunsets are beautiful. But, you know, the amount of history mm. uh, you can experience there doesn't stand, doesn't compare uh, to the amount of history and legends and fables mm -hmm. uh, that have evolved in the in the Peloponnese. This is truly uh, the area between Athens and the Peloponnese is Greece's heartland. And um, uh, right, Greece after the independence in 1821 was mostly the Peloponnese at first. At first, uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, so if this is uh, if if you like, uh, you know, a tour that has a kind of a a big element of history in it, uh, you know, the land route, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't really compare to Mykonos and, and Santorini. And uh, I have to say, not because I'm from here, but our sunsets are not just comparable, but uh, very, very competitive to the ones in, in Santorini. And I will kind of challenge any Santorinian who's on the screen to, to kind of compare sunsets. Um, but So uh, I have receipts. Yeah. I mean, I could show you one of the sunsets that I took of yesterday, so let me pop it up. Yes, yeah. So right here is mm -hmm. a video of the sunset yeah. yesterday. And that was the sunset from uh, this beautiful church. What area were we at yesterday in that church? Uh, so we were at the, the Church of Idea for the name of Mantini, which is uh, an ancient battlefield. Yeah, Spartans and Thebans just after the but also the sign of the great uh, church, something so imaginative and beautiful as if built by Antonio Gaudi uh, in Barcelona, but it's actually built by, by a local architect with a, uh, with a great imagination. I'm going to pop up a photo of it right now so people can know what we're talking about. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, this is a cool church. This is um, what I think sometimes is awesome going with a guide like Evan. Uh, because you end up going to places like these that yeah, it, it's That's hard it. to find as a tourist uh, because they're usually not in the guidebooks and you have to really dig in deep into the history or really be of the neighborhood or the, the region to really know. You are right. Yeah. That, I mean, that's another key element of, of what we do. I mean, it's, uh, it's about the discovery of stories that uh, no one really knows very well. They're a bit forgotten, hidden away, but they're very, very interesting uh, yeah, in, the, in the context of, of our tour and link with the rest of the narrative we have. And this is a very special place with a very unique history that most people will just kind of pass by um, in the motorway on the yeah. ATB. But a small diversion, a small deviation, and makes for a very uh, important, two very important episodes, let's say, kind of, uh, that, that, that show us a little bit into you know, kind of ancient Greek battle tactics, which is what we kind of showcase there, uh, but also some kind of truly imaginative architecture and the driving force behind it, mm. uh, which is, of course, uh, kind of, a, you know, religious beliefs, but also 
um, kind of a very progressive and visionary approach to engineering and architecture, um, uh, religious engineering and architecture. So um, it's quite a bit niche, let's say, subjects, but make for a very kind of nice kind of stop uh, where we learn something new and enjoy the sunset in the kind of uh, you know, breathtaking and unique surroundings. Um, yeah, for me, uh, an urbanist niche is always why I feel like people remember the most, including my own self. Mm -hmm. uh, when something is kind of offbeat, out of the ordinary, something you don't expect, is something that really sticks in your mind for a long time. Hey, Mia Louise says, uh, Ariel, love the fact that you do travel videos live. Thank you so much. Yeah, my pleasure. Um, Hey, Inks Fire Life says the urbanist tours are going to be like no other. Indeed. <laughs> Nicole says it's so beautiful. It really is. Susie says Greece appears to have so many national holidays. It does indeed. I think when I, every time I come here, I at least pass by three or four national holidays. <laughs> <laughs> well, if we didn't have so many, we would have to invent some. <laughs> and there seems to be new strikes demanding more ho national holidays. <laughs> yeah, because we have to, you know, when you have to rest before you work. Yeah. And then you have to rest again. Exactly. And then you have to work, <laughs> but first and foremost, you have to rest. rest exactly. If you're not rested, you can't work. You can't work, yeah. And that's my also maxim as a Greek. And if you're working, you can't rest. Yeah. So. Rest first, <laughs> work, <laughs> work later. <laughs> I'm joking, right? <laughs> no, we don't have as many. That's a myth. That's, a, that's as much as a myth. It's mythological. It's mythological. We have to compare. So, so Evan will give you a Greek tour, but with German timing, okay? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, for example, you know, I am, you know, I am spot on, like in, in the minute and always. I get, uh, I get really kind of anxious when we're late five minutes to somewhere. So isn't that tectonic? Isn't that German? Just, be, just be, because we take another 20 extra holidays a year from the German people, which I, I love and, yeah. and admire, I yeah, have to say. Uh, um, you know, no hard feelings. And uh, isn't that... Is it not something that, uh, you know, we have to explore a little bit? And we will explore it's like sometimes. Detour, yeah. It's nice to draw comparisons between uh, perhaps often stereotypical yeah. uh, aspects of what it means to be Greek and how we are viewed and how others view us and how we view other nationalities. But 99% uh, of the times, do you know what I found out? Leading tours with international what? guests, etc. Ooh, tell us the secret. We are not that different after all. <laughs> what? We, we have the same needs, you know, we have the same kind of values most of the time. And, uh, you know, we enjoy the same things. Um, and we are excited uh, by beauty and kind of great weather, good food and, and history equally, um, you know, across the globe. So it's just a matter to find, you know, this kind of common ground. Where do we intersect? Where do we overlap? And uh, I think uh, where do we intersect and overlap is like we're spending one week together in Greece and kind of, you know, I tell you my stories and you tell me yours and then we find out. You know, that's why this has to be conversational. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so now that we're up here, uh, for people who or traveling on their own or with a group, or it doesn't really matter. Um, where do you recommend them to go in the Peloponnese? So uh, there is a... What would be the... Let's, let's put them into five sites. So I would... Let's consider this one of these sites, uh, along with Sparta together. So Mistras slash Sparta. Mistras be, is a must. Yeah. Uh, I think it's a beautiful site. It's kind of a little bit kind of less well known, and it covers this uh, history of the Byzantine era. Um, which I think uh, it's, quite, it's quite important. It's a very, very important part of the history. Then, of course, you have Olympia. Ancient Olympia, this is also a site that is unmissable. It's the birthplace of the Olympic Games. Um, and it's, it's an astonishing site. I mean, imagine you can run on the same track that and athletes used to compete uh, all this uh, right. uh, kind of millennia ago. Um, then, of course, uh, you have uh, Corinth, the Corinth Canal. You know, such an important, uh, massive feat of uh, 19th century engineering. It's like, a, you know, 10 years before the Panama Canal 
Mm -hmm. They have built at a great expense and great effort, and it's a, even today it's an astonishing, beautiful sight to behold. Um, you have uh, the site of ancient Messini, perhaps also, which is one of the most well-preserved ancient cities uh, here in uh, the Peloponnese, with its own uh, also stadium that is uh, truly remarkable. How uh, how well um, you know it stands until today, and it's kind of these kind of massive uh, walls, etc. And that's uh, featured in, in our vlog that yes, we, we did have together. Done, yeah, we have we have been there in uh, in Messina. It's, it's really really beautiful and remarkable. Um, as a last uh, kind of let's say wild cards, yeah, where the, one the of my card. personal favorite places in uh, in the Peloponnese uh, is uh, Monemvasia. It's Ooh. a small kind of fortified castle island on the south of the Peloponnese. You haven't we haven't had a chance to be there. No, um, but this is truly something. Imagine this. Yeah, as you see it now, but it's it's preserved very well and it's actually inhabited. People live there still. It's fortified, it's stone houses, medieval, but uh, and people by have the not. Sea? It is into the sea. It's into a promontory, oh, uh, wow. a, an island. Hmm. You know, it's just kind of virtually connected to the inland with uh, with a causeway. Mm -hmm. It didn't exist that there, so it's an island that's very close, very close to the coast, and you know it's a fortified island with a castle and um, truly a remarkable, uh, you know, kind of medieval experience, a living experience, because every place we we stay there, in every place we stay there, it's some kind of like a medieval kind of house or castle. So it's truly uh, remarkable and astonishing. There's plenty, oh. plenty more, you know, I could... There's, there's you know, plenty more. Well, we'll talk a little bit more about that as we continue downhill, but yeah, yeah even those five recommendations alone, I think you'll, you'll get a really different sense of Greece because I haven't been to Olympia or the last one, remind me of the name? Monemvasia. Monemvasia. Um, but I've been to the others. And just here in Mistras, I, I'm stunned. You really get a feeling for medieval times, for Eastern Roman times, just being here. Because a lot of people know ancient Greece, but they don't always know medieval Greece. And uh, they don't know modern Greece. Hey, this is... Uh, Tia Astis says um, Nafplio is a must. Nafplio is a great city too. It's yeah. great, yes, yeah. I, I concur. You know, you see, it's really hard if you yeah. give me only five options. Yeah, yeah. You know, of course, how we, we shouldn't kind of forget Nafplio, uh, the first modern capital of Greece uh, before Athens, uh, after the revolution. It's really unique, picturesque. Uh, it has one of the biggest fortresses, uh, a beautiful port area, but also, more importantly, it feels like you're in an island with these little kind of narrow uh, streets, no mm. cars, and kind of small kind of whitewashed houses. Uh, it's truly, and uh, you say, you know, you get a bit of, uh, you know, this feeling of Aegean island, even, even in the mainland sometimes. Oh, yeah. uh, if you, you know, if you look at it this way, uh, you know, architecturally and the feeling you get, is that you are in this kind of cute little ancient place with the white whitewashed houses and small narrow streets and every turn is a surprise with little kind of cafes and restaurants with three tables outside and these sort of thing. It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, good. I, I agree. Oh. I love Nathalio. Yes. And Inspire, Inspire Life says, move over Rick Steves. <laughs> <laughs> so you know about Rick Steves, right? Uh, I am not, not too much. familiar. So he's a very famous Rick. American tra travel personality and travel show host. I see. But he runs tours, and they're ma mainly geared towards Americans, and they tend to be older Americans. I see. Uh, and then take them all throughout Europe. Oh, thank you. He, That's it's a compliment then. He, oh, <laughs> he used to do it personally himself, uh, uh, but of course then he handed it off to uh, amazing tour guides all around Europe. Ah, uh, I see. And um, and I actually was telling Evan a little bit about uh, Amer American uh, quirks that we have that I think would be uh, good to intertwined into the tour especially if, if we have a group with a lot of americans yeah yes. <laughs> because I, i've noticed that you mentioned that ultimately everyone is the same but sometimes there is a, a a slight difference when it comes to europeans versus americans when it comes to interest levels in certain aspects sure because in america we truly really love our ancient greek history uh because it's part 
uh, the very foundation of even our country in terms of uh, many of its tenants. So a lot of American travelers tend to really know deeply uh, many aspects of ancient Greek history. Yes. And of course, movies play a big part in them as well. Uh, mm -hmm. But here, speaking of, um, of doing it, uh, <laughs> actually, I have no good segue for this, but this is a bathroom right here. <laughs> this is a, a, a actual place where uh, it was a communal bathroom right here. It says uh, privy when nature calls. And look at that. Uh, hey, uh, Jeremy says, don't forget Epidavros. Epidavros, yes, Epidavros. the ancient theater where many of the ancient plays, hmm. uh, you know, were, uh, were acted. Yes, yeah. 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 Nilly says, uh, happy Ohi Day. Happy Ohi Day to you too. How do you say happy Ohi Day in Greek, uh, Evan? <laughs> Uh, well, uh, let me zito, no. to, zito to ethnos. It's here for the nation. This oh. is what we say. <laughs> <laughs> Connor says a lot of us Americans don't even know where Europe is. Well, we'll help you with that. Then. <laughs> that is not true. A lot of Europeans don't know where, you know, it does, its state is. It's, it's, yeah. it's reciprocal. You see, we right. don't we don't really know. Uh, That's right. This does smell a bit funky. I'm not sure why. Uh, maybe it's still in you. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. I hope not. I hope not. <laughs> There is a little bit of I, funk I, in there. Is, is it, uh, all these centuries of uh, using it, I suppose I left a mark. Hello, Jason. Hello, Gary. Gary, nice to see you here. Hope you and Susie are doing well. All right. And for people going on their own in the Peloponnese, what, what's your pro tips? Do you need a car to get around the Peloponnese? I would say definitely. Yeah, uh, seems like it. They, uh, you know, we used to have an extensive train network, but uh, it kind of, uh, it's a bit abandoned these days. Uh, so it's not in use anymore, actually. So you don't, you can't get around by train. Then the coach uh, uh, public transport system is good. But uh, what it's, uh, you know, it's difficult to get a, you know, to figure out the timetables because it's it mostly is. in Greek. Uh, it's not very well, you know, tuned for uh, visitors uh, who the... we assume would not be keen to use the public <laughs> transport system. But of course, it is, it is great if you can figure it out. The, uh, uh, the attendants usually at the bus stations also are not the friendliest uh, uh, if you don't know Greek. Yeah. Maybe uh, they that's are what I've encountered. Yeah. Bored. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Where shall we go? What do you recommend? Uh, Towards the exit. Uh, you, you, we yeah. can, yeah, we can hang out that way also. Yeah, that's we, we can let's go. Let's just check it out. Yeah. We have another. Yeah, because we're really close to the exit at this point. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna stick around for. Is it okay for 15 minutes? Or how's yes. timing? Yeah. Okay. So we'll stick around for 15 minutes. Feel free to ask any questions about the Peloponnese, uh, which. Just give a people a general overview what the geography is, if you could describe it <laughs> the best way. Well, the Peloponnese by name is, uh, is an island, essentially, Peloponnesus. It's the island of Pelops, and uh, we, we call it an island, and I guess it is separated by the mainland by this kind of thin, narrow uh, kind of canal, uh, the Isthmus of Corinth. So uh, the rest of it is uh, wonderful beaches and seaside towns uh, with kind of large, large mountain range in the middle. Uh, so you have a combination of uh, seasides and mountain. Uh, you have snow up in the mountain in, in the winter. You know, it's very snowy. It's like a peak of, uh, uh, I don't know, the mountains anywhere in the world. Oh, uh, so there's snow peaked mountains. Yes, oh, wow. in the really winter. And then you have a kind of lovely kind of sandy beaches and it's kind of very nice and warm and cozy and you know, seafood, goat soup. You know, seaside kind of resort, and there's kind of wild kind of mountain. Um, so we have a little a kind of a combination, a variety, let's say, of uh, biomes and, uh, uh, and and kind of vistas and, and natural features. And then, uh, so you, one generally requires a car. It is possible to be a bus, but you generally have to stick to one or two cities, like Kalamata or Kiparasia or. I would Something say like so. Yeah. Optimal, the optimal way Not to blue. go around and see yeah. most uh, things is, uh, you know, most places of interest is, is by car. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, where you can kind of be more detailed and uh, you know quite truly sometimes you know you drive and you see a nice village or a nice place you want to stop over and, and have a lunch or kind of look around a little bit so that's the best way but you can fly you can fly from Athens I think in in the summer there is there are flights from Athens to Kalamata oh for interesting. example okay. it's gonna take you to the south of the Peloponnese Kalamata is one of the larger mm. uh, cities in the area uh, Kalamata, of course, is famous for its, for its olives and its olive uh, oil, oil production. Uh, you probably see it in your supermarkets, wherever you are. Um, and it's a very beautiful kind of seaside, seaside town uh, with a very vibrant nightlife that we had the chance to. Oh, in Kalamata, yeah, yeah, Kalamata, yeah, yeah. to enjoy a little that. bit. Last time yeah. we were there. <clears throat> so it's uh, so it's nice if you don't want just kind of a quiet, secluded beaches with not that many. You know, just people around and, and be a little bit calm, quiet. If you like a little bit of a more of a buzz and nightlife and this sort of thing, Kalamata is, is wonderful any time of the year. That was my next question. Kalamata would make a great uh, base uh, for exploring that area of the Peloponnese. And then, um, and then, what would you recommend for in terms of food? What would you recommend people to try if they travel around this time of year, for example? Oh, it's uh, yeah. <laughs> it's truly so so regional. But of course, in the summer. Uh, you, you have to take advantage of fresh uh, fruit and vegetables uh, anywhere you can. And most places generally have good food, right? I, I think it will be hard to go somewhere and say, oh, you know, what I just had, maybe it was not that, especially when it's like a small kind of family-run yeah, restaurant. Yeah, it's rare. Uh, most of the times kind of flavors are, are quite, quite well uh, kind of made and interesting. And I think the natural ingredients, uh, you know, make a, play a big role. In, in the flavors and how successful you say this kind of meal mm. or this is. Um, so in the summer, it's like a fruit, tomatoes, you know, fresh vegetables, and then you make you know, stuffed tomatoes and peppers with rice, for example, is one of my favorites with a dollop of yo yogurt on top. Mm -hmm. Yemista? Yemista. Uh. Yemista, you know, kind of stuffed vegetables is what you have in the summer. In the winter, when it's not in season, uh, those who know usually move towards kind of winter foods. Various, you know, goat soup is one of my favorites. You can have this in the mountains where they have plenty of flocks. Uh, of course, heads, uh, goat heads. Cat and Yellow Ranger says uh, he can go really go for some goat soup right now. Oh man, I, you know, I, I, I like it and kind of spice it up with a bit of kind of the chili flakes there, and it's nice, really you know, warming and energizing, you know, it's good, it's good food. It's not, it's not a joke. And let me pause you there uh, for people who want to have a really relaxing time. Say they go to Kalamata, it's very vibrant, but now they also want to have a place where they can just chill out. What's you know, a good base? Truly, everything is, uh, is just a hop away. Like within one hour from Kalamata, you can visit Pilos. Mm -hmm. uh, which is a beautiful small hamlet, again, very reminiscent of, uh, you know, any, you know, Aegean architecture. It's mm. kind of like on the side, on the side of a cliff overlooking the sea, whitewashed houses. If you see it from a distance, you cannot tell if it's Santorini or if it's something oh, else. interesting, okay. Uh, which is what most people don't know. Um, uh, so it's uh, wonderful and lovely. Then money, I guess, is the entire area, uh, this kind of first, uh, you know, this kind of second, second, first and second leg of the Peloponnese. Uh, so to speak, and it's quite rugged and, and rocky and, uh, you know, locals there for hundreds of years, they're building these kind of stone towers because stone is the, the only material they have. It's so rocky and craggy everywhere. And, and most of the places you will stay there is those kind of towers, those medieval uh, towers that are very kind of quiet and beautiful and probably kind of standing somewhere at the edge of a cliff overlooking the sea. Uh, and you can really kind of take your time there and, and relax because it's going to be a place that's going to have, have maybe three or four rooms and maybe three or four guests. Very quiet and yeah. you, know, you, can, you can write a book. If I ever write a book, <laughs> and I, I'm trying to, probably going to ret retire there for <laughs> a month or two and just kind of clear my head and look at the sea and start kind of writing. It is a very unique country because it's one of those few countries where you really have beaches that are warm a good portion of the year and then you have mountains right next door and literally they're like an hour or two hours drive away yes. it's not even that treacherous or, or long to drive to each of them so you could almost do them both at the same time and in some cases we have uh, yeah it's, it's unfair to say and sometimes i see that you know when you know tour operators and travel agents and you know kind of beach holidays greece 
That is like only partially true. Yeah. Where, wherever there is kind of a beach there, you know, just like on the other end, almost always you can go hiking on a mountain. And, you know, it's quite, quite high. And there is, of course, canyons and these sort of things in, in many places. And it's uh, you know, reasonably safe if you have especially a local guide, which, you know, we always you know, try and do. We do a number of hikes also. Um, and we see different, also interesting local aspects. You can see an abandoned temple or a column that nobody, you know, knows what it is, unless you have someone to, to tell you what it is. Um, you know, forgotten shrine or a location, a historic location with great significance. Um, so there is a lot to explore. And then, you know, one hour there and one hour hike, and then one hour back, and you can go in back deep into the sea. Um, so it's just right. as like one terrain and one activity. There's always a combination of terrains and, and activities to, you know, to, for everyone really to enjoy. Yeah, so that's how Evan usually um, hosts his tours. He has a series of different guides, uh, experts in specific places. So <laughs> you might see some other familiar faces in our tours that I featured because I feature some other cool guides as well, specifically in Athens. So stay tuned. Let's explore a little bit of this. If you have any last questions about the Peloponnese, feel free to ask away as we show you this little, what appears to be, what is this, monastery? It is a... Uh, the water supply here, I'm talking about it. Yeah, it is, let's say, the main, uh, the main church of this uh, complex, the cathedral. The cathedral, yeah. yeah. And this is great water. Yeah, Evan is brave enough to <laughs> drink the local water. <laughs> In all seriousness, uh, these water systems have been around for like, m some of them for 2,000 years, so they've been safe for 2,000 years. Hello, Janice. bad cell phone reception. Let's go this way. Let's end over here. Let's end by here, this field of cats. Just enjoying their food. <laughs> All right, so everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. This was a walk through Mistras. I have a short video coming up of more history of Mistras, though I posted one a few months ago, so check both of those out. You'll be seeing other spots in Greece uh, throughout this week, so stay tuned. And then if you want to do a urbanist IRL tour, in real life tour, hosted by Evan, who runs Explorabilia. You can do that starting around spring or summer 2024. So stay tuned for those details at urbanist.live slash tours. And we'll be announcing them uh, soon, at least a few months ahead of time, so people can sign up uh, with uh, some proper um, uh, advance notice. So thank you everyone so much for tuning in. Thank you, Evan, for showing me around. Thank you. And giving us pro tips about the Peloponnese. And, uh, and you'll be seeing Evan other videos that have featured as well. And check out our Peloponnese vlog if you want to see an overall trip of the Peloponnese in a short 20 minutes. And also we have a little, I uh, feature a little bit of Evan's uh, mother's cooking as well, which was very fun too. Sure. <laughs> Everyone keep being awesome and always keep on exploring. Have a great day. Bye-bye. As they say in Greece, enjoy me for a wave goodbye. Yes, us. Yes, us. <laughs>